In my profession, I encounter many peculiar situations. But one of the strangest cases I ever had was with a gringo by the name of Daffy Duck. Senor Duck came to my office about one year ago in a condition of extreme shock and depression. I asked him to lie down on my couch and tell me his troubles from the beginning. It all began as I was sitting in the park one day reading my newspaper. A mouse by the name of Speedy Gonzalez strolled by. As I watched him pass, I became aware of a strange desire within myself. I visualized him on a plate with an apple in his mouth, with lettuce, salad, parsley, and hundred sauce. Suddenly, I snapped to my senses. I knew something had to be wrong. Ducks don't eat mice. Cats eat mice. And I was sure I wasn't a cat. Or at least I thought I was sure. Discounting the experience, I went back to reading my paper. The mouse walked by again. This time I avoided looking at him. I tried to ignore his presence, but I couldn't. I saw another vision. Mouse under glass. I couldn't imagine what was wrong with me. Was I cracking up? Why did I have these strange desires? Oh, I was relieved when he walked away. I shook off the feeling and went back to reading my paper. But suddenly, I had an overwhelming desire to, to, to do something that I had never even dreamed of doing before. I tried to suppress it, but it was impossible. Meow. Things were getting progressively worse as time passed. I found myself sneaking up on the mouse. might suspect I had problems explaining my actions at times. I was afraid to go out in public lest my strange desires overcome me. I stayed inside my house all the time, all alone, except for one mouse. Speedy Gonzalez had moved in. He asked me to join him for lunch. I considered taking him up on it. I caught myself at the last moment. I panicked and ran, screaming, out of the house. As the days passed, my feline impulses grew. I tried to act normally in public and retain my composure. In order to take my mind off my problems, I took up singing. Singing wasn't the answer either, so I returned home to think things over. I was getting more fidgety each day. I was nervous as a... as a... cat? Oh no! I needed a drink! I had stashed a carton of milk in the chandelier. I poured myself a saucer full, and as I leaned down to lap it up, I realized that I needed professional help. So that's why I'm here. You gotta help me. Please, Doc, please. All right, all right. Let us see how you're doing the ink blood test. Now, what do you see? And, uh, 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 nothing, uh, nothing. That is strange. I see a mouse. Mm, maybe it is something physical. I will run some lab tests on you. Aha, Senor Doc. The lab test shows that three and two tenths percent of your blood is catnip. Four percent is considered a lethal level. It is no wonder you acting like a gato. You must look for the source of this catnip. Then I can help you. I returned to my little hacienda, wondering where I could have ever come in contact with catnip. The smog seemed worse than usual that day, so I started to close my window. It was then that I saw it, right across the street, a catnip factory. There was only one thing to do, destroy the source of my irritation. Now 
there would never be another ounce of catnip in all of Mexico. Now I was safe. At least, that's what I thought. <laughs> Hello? Oh, Señor Dog, ¿cómo está? All cure, eh? Bueno, bueno. My bill? Oh, uh, that will be only 2,500 pesos. Hello? 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 Hmm, I lose more patients that way. Well, that's showbiz. Next patient, please, Señor S. González. And now, Señor González, just what is your problem? Oh, I should have listened to my padre. He wanted me to be a bandido. Mm -hmm.